Here are my top seven hip mobility drills for athletes. On the field, I need my legs and hips to be able to be fluid and move through full ranges of motion that classic stretching and strength training doesn't really expose me to. The drills I'm gonna show you today are gonna help me to be able to access those intense angles and positions that are gonna be required of me on the field. Not only will improving my hip mobility help my performance on the field, but it's also gonna help with injury prevention as well. The hip is a ball and socket joint that goes in all different directions like extension, flexion, and rotation. So today I'm gonna show you seven drills that target all of those areas and cover all your bases when it comes to hip mobility. All right, the first drill we're gonna do is called a 90-90 hip switch, and this drill targets both internal and external rotation of the hips. So what I'm gonna do for this one is get into a position where I have a 90 degree angle with my front leg and a 90 degree angle with my back leg. So that's what the 90-90 is about. And then from here, we're keeping our feet in the exact same position, and I'm bringing my knees up and around to the other side to hit those 90 degree angles again. So we're just going up and over. And so what you can see is that external rotation is happening at this front hip and then internal rotation is happening at this back hip. So we're hitting both of those qualities at the same time and we're trying to stay upright with your torso as well. Now, if you feel like you're moving around or having trouble with this, you can also place your hands behind you and just be a little bit more supported with your upper body so that you can just really focus on the hips because that's really what we're trying to accomplish with this drill. In order to move effectively on the field, athletes really need both hip internal and external rotation and this drill takes care of both. So it's a really great catch-all drill to handle hip rotation. Drill two is gonna be a supine knee hug. So this drill targets both hip flexion and extension. So I'm gonna be lying on my back, both legs out extended, and then we're gonna pull one knee in, just kind of grab underneath your knee and then pull that knee in. And we're trying to make sure that we're not rounding or tucking the hips under as we do that because that's gonna create some back flexion without actually creating that hip extension that we're looking for. So instead of rounding your back, we're thinking about keeping that leg extended, keeping your spine long, and then pulling that knee in as much as you can. Hold for a couple seconds, and then we'll let that leg go and switch sides. You may feel a little difference on each side, that's pretty normal, but we just wanna make sure that we're thinking long spine, kick that bottom leg out straight as much as you can, so we're getting both that flexion and extension benefit. The ability to be able to split your legs linearly is really important in activities like running and sprinting where one leg needs to extend behind you while the other one needs to flex in front of you. All right, drill number three is gonna be a half kneeling hip flexor rock, and this one directly targets hip extension. So what I'm gonna do here is get into a half kneeling position, so one knee down, one leg forward, and the very first thing I wanna do here is think about tucking my pelvis under. This is a key component to making sure that you get the most out of this mobility drill. A lot of times what we see is people getting this kind of big arch in their back and then just cranking out what they think is a hip flexor stretch but is really more of a lower back stretch. So we wanna really think about tilting under, you're tucking your pelvis, you're gonna immediately feel a stretch in the front of that hip flexor right there anyway, just from doing that. And then you can place your hands on your front knee and we're gonna rock forward just ever so slightly to increase that stretch and then rock back. So it's not actually a huge movement or huge range of motion. It's more about getting that pelvis tucked under and then getting a little bit of extra stretch each time you move forward. All right, so again, that drill is gonna hit hip extension. This is a quality that we tend to lose or that our hip flexors tend to just get really tight when we're sitting all day. And so we really wanna make sure that we're loosening that up. And this is just a little bit of an extra way to do that aside from some of the other drills where we're combining extension and flexion. This one's just purely working on extension. Drill number four, we're gonna do a wall tall kneeling to half kneeling hip rotation. And this targets hip internal and external rotation. So for this one, we're gonna set up against a wall so that when your arms are extended, they're out straight and you can press into the wall. And then from there, from this tall kneeling position, you're gonna bring this back leg back, out to the side, around, plant your foot down, and then lift it up, rotate around, and plant it down. So you can see I'm working extension, so I actually didn't even mention extension, but extension here, and then rotation here, especially as I come around, we've got that hip internal rotation as we're going. But one of the main things that we wanna focus on here as we're doing this drill is that we're keeping our torso and our upper body as still as possible. That's why the wall is helpful to push into and to keep your torso from moving because we're trying to dissociate the hips from and the pelvis from the rest of your body so we really get that focus rotation coming just from the hip. All right, drill number five is gonna be a supported squat with internal rotations, and this one specifically targets hip internal rotation. All right, for this one, I'm gonna use a squat rack upright, but you can use anything like a pole, a door frame, a TRX, anything to sort of help to support you. And then from there, we're gonna come down to about 90 degrees with this squat. We're not trying to go all the way down to the bottom because we're not really working on hip 
flexion, we're really working on ro internal rotation, so just about 90 degrees is great. And then from there, we're thinking about bringing this knee in and allowing your foot to pivot. So your heel lifts and your foot pivots, and then stepping back, and then switching sides. And we're trying not to let your whole body rotate because then again, you're not just getting hip internal rotation, you're getting full body internal rotation. We wanna think about just moving through the hip by keeping everything else stable. That's why we have the support and just rotating and pivoting on that foot. A lot of hip mobility drills that you'll see will focus mostly on hip external rotation, and that's definitely important, but when it comes to sports, if we wanna cut and change direction effectively, we also really do need a good amount of internal rotation, which is why this drill is really helpful. All right, drill number six is gonna be a Spider-Man lunge, also known as the world's greatest stretch, and this one targets hip flexion, extension, and external rotation. All right, for this drill, we're gonna start in a push-up position, and I'm gonna step my left foot to the outside of my left hand, and I want my toes to be pointing forward. And then from there, I'm gonna push my left knee out. That's where we get that external rotation from. And I also wanna make sure I'm really extending through my back leg so we get that hip extension in the back leg. And now from here, if we wanna make it a little bit extra spicy, we can take that inside elbow and drop it toward the floor. That's gonna increase the stretch on the front leg. And then we can also reach it up to the ceiling. That's gonna increase the stretch on the back leg. So that just adds a little element of spice there. And then we can go ahead and switch sides and do the same thing. Don't forget to push that knee out before you drop the elbow down and reach up to the ceiling. All right, so again here, we're working on splitting the legs linearly, but now we're also adding in a little bit of external rotation with that front leg. And unlike the supine knee hugs, where we're also doing the same thing, that linear separation, now we're being a little bit more active by engaging our core, having to use our upper body. So just more is contributing to this movement, which is gonna be a little bit more applicable to what you're actually gonna be experiencing on the field. The seventh and final drill is a supported Cossack squat. And this one specifically works on separate the legs laterally. All right, so we're going back to using that upright support, but this time we're gonna start in a super wide stance with your feet. And then from here, we're gonna shift your weight to the right, sit your hips back slightly, but really think about focusing on bringing your butt toward your heel and letting that other foot point up toward the ceiling. All right, and then we're gonna shift over to the other side without really standing up and just keep switching from side to side here. You're gonna feel a pretty decent stretch on that inner thigh and hips. We've talked about the importance of being able to separate your hips linearly, but when we're cutting and changing directions, we also need to be able to separate them laterally. Now, hopefully in a game situation, you're not needing quite that much lateral mobility, but you never know if you're gonna slip, if you're gonna dive for a flag, if you're gonna take a big leap on the field, and you wanna just be sure that you're gonna have more mobility really than you need, so that in those instances, in those moments, we're not risking injury. So there you have it. Those are some of my top hip mobility drills that help me to perform my best and to stay healthy on the field. So you can perform these in a seven minute circuit where you do each drill for a minute or 30 seconds on each side, or you can choose two or three drills to add in as a warm up to your strength workout, or you can pick one drill a day and do that over the course of the week and really spend a little bit of extra time on each individual drill. It doesn't really matter how you split it up as long as it's manageable and sustainable for you. Combining these moves with strength training multiple times a week through full ranges of motion and practicing your sport out on the field is really gonna help those mobility gains stick. Let me know if there are any other topics you'd like us to cover in the future in the comment section and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one.